Hey again, everyone. This is Sharon Lawrence from Sela Wellness and Therapeutic Services. I hope you're all doing well today. Um, I just wanted to drop in again. You know, this whole YouTube thing is new to me, but on the flip side of it, I know that I have a message to share and I want to be able to encourage people on their journey towards wholeness. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about how to manage your own bag, basically your own baggage, right? So recently I had an opportunity to work with some individuals on how to address stress and unhealthy relationships. And what I came to realize is that many people do not understand that no one is exempt from stress or ever experiencing an unhealthy relationship. And what I find is that there are so many people who will actually say things like, I just, you know, I'm a stress-free person. Um, I don't have any drama. Um, I don't have any baggage. I can't deal with people with baggage. And the reality is that we all have baggage, whether it's small, whether it's big, it doesn't matter. And so in learning that no one is exempt from stress or ever having an unhealthy relationship, keep in mind that th those are just two scenarios that we can face in our lives. You know, I'm not even talking about the other things that come, you know, into play. So in presenting this information to my clients, I gave the illustration of a person with baggage because we all have it, right? Yours may be a purse, it may be a clutch, a duffel bag, a suitcase, or even a paper or a plastic bag. And I share it with them, like even as a kid, I remember my mother used to keep her money in a paper bag. And you know, it was years later she started using the purse, but it was for the longest, to me, that was like probably one of the smartest things you could do because it was compact, no one knew what was in there. And it was like, it was light for the journey, right? And so keep in mind, you know, with your baggage, whatever form it comes in, it's a method of holding things for example, groceries, personal care items, clothing, your emotions, your stress or frustration, you name it, it has a bag. So on this journey called life, we have the obligation to evaluate relationships, situations, and circumstances that we face. In doing so, keep in mind that there may be times when our experiences also involve someone else's experiences which has the potential to create added stress. Here are seven things to keep in mind when managing baggage. One, know what is in your bag. It is very important that you know what is in your bag, what it is you're carrying, what you give out or get out of your bag, and what you replace it with. Be mindful of what you are dealing with and take with you daily. This requires a level of self-awareness that is necessary to manage one's self accordingly and diligently. Number two, this is a good one. Clean out your bag periodically. There are times that I will actually begin to throw out some things that are either trash, expired, or just no longer needed for my daily routine. I follow the same steps for my mind and my spirit. I reflect on what God wants me to keep. I reflect on what is no longer needed, what is expired, meaning it no longer has a place of value in my life and or I, it's just not needed at that time. I love cleaning out my bag because it makes the journey so much lighter. The time it takes to do this, sometimes people don't want to commit, but I guarantee you once the task is completed, we are better off than when we started. Number three, keep your bag organized. Be aware of what is in your bag at any given time. If you are anything like me, you may carry the same bag with you for weeks at a time, not really knowing what is in the bag. Every now and then I go through my bags and I organize them in a way so that I know what is in each area of the bag. This is the same for my emotional well-being. Often, I take time to organize my thoughts, my feelings, and my emotions in order to check myself. This allows me to confirm that my mind is organized, that I'm clear, that I'm focused. It helps me to be the best me. And I guarantee you that it will help you to be the best you. Number four. Don't carry anyone else's baggage. 
unless someone has a physical or emotional limitation, there really is no reason for you to consider carrying someone else's baggage. I'm talking about baggage that has the potential to slow you down, cause you to strain a muscle, or even blow up, causing great harm. Sorry about that. <laughs> As humans, it is our nature to jump in and help. However, consider your next steps before taking on more than you should, especially when you are in a place of learning how to manage your own bags. At this point in time, you want to be able to model for other people and you would hope that they could benefit from learning to carry and manage their own baggage as well. Got it? Number five, keep your bags to a minimum. Learn to pack light for the journey. When traveling, have you ever packed as if you were going on a two-week vacation when you were actually only going to be gone for about three days? I definitely have been in this situation. We do this when tackling multiple situations, especially within our relationships. We may overthink a situation or try to manage too much in effort to address that situation. We pack more than we should, realizing that it creates more confusion because we could not decide what to use for the trip or our situation. By keeping your bags to a minimum, you increase your chances and your ability to maneuver better. When you have less to carry, you can get the job done more efficiently. You can address a situation more efficiently. Number six, know when to throw some bags away. Let's just get straight to the nitty gritty on this one. Have you ever been carrying bags back and forth to work because you think you need what's in there? This is the case for many professionals. What I have found is that when you finally go through the bags, you realize that you no longer need what is in there and that the bag is so worn that it has no purpose moving forward. It is imperative that you begin to look at what you carry with you daily. My mantra is pause, reflect, and revive. Take the moment to pause and reflect on what it is you take with you emotionally on a daily basis. Reflect on its value. Evaluate if it is helpful or harmful. If it is the latter, trash it, get rid of it. Remove it from your life so that you can experience a more revived life. Got it? Good. This is the same for some relationships. I believe that some relationships are there for a season a reason, or a lifetime. So keep that in mind when evaluating how much you're carrying, what you're carrying, and if you need to be carrying it. And number seven, don't go back to being a bad person. Once you do all of this, walk in your freedom. Be a one to two bag minimum person. <laughs> walk and move in a man.